WWE was insane this past week. Seth Freaking Rollins, this is Red Alive on YouTube. What is going on, guys? Red Alive back with another video. And today we have the WWE Week in Review setup episode 266, where we go over Raw and SmackDown in a WWE action figure setup style. We are going to be starting off with Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw was jam packed full of action from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Packers suck, but anyways, we're going to be jumping in to Monday Night Raw side of things. Halfway through the video, we're going to be jumping into the blue brand SmackDown. What do I have to do? Let's jump into Monday Night Raw. We open up the show with an absolute brawl. Gunther coming out and continuing to talk crap about the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Damian Priest. Damian Priest wasn't going to stand for it. Hit his music, he walks out, and he's like, he didn't say a word. Nope. Punches Gunther right in the face. Leads to an absolute brawl where Damian Priest would even launch a security guard over the top rope, landing on top of a massive pile of guys. They brawled it out even through the commercial break backstage because Jackie Redman was about to get an interview with Gunther, but then Damian Priest attacked again. It led to both men being ejected from the arena so they couldn't get into it again because Adam Pearce doesn't want this match spoiled. He wants them to go one-on-one -on -one at SummerSlam for the world title, but things are heating up between Gunther and and Damian Priest. This was an amazing way to open up the show. Our opening match was Ilya Dragunov going up against Braun Breaker. This was a number one contenders match for the Intercontinental Championship. Winner faces Sami Zayn at SummerSlam, obviously for the IC title. This match was amazing. Oh my gosh, 20 minutes of just absolute jam-packed action. Even when we saw Ilya Dragunov do a fireman's carry, similar to like an attitude adjustment, drops Braun Breaker right on the apron. Right after that, Ilya Dragunov, I'm like, oh, he's got the W. Just get in the ring, win by count out. You got that title match. It's all you, Ilya. And then Braun Breaker gets back on his feet. And then Ilya Dragunov jumps off the apron, spears Dragunov right out of the air, and the back of Dragunov's head hit the apron. I was like, oh, it is over. He can no longer compete. The referee, Daphne, she's like, nah, this ain't gonna happen. Braun Baker, your winner and the number one contender. Once again, for the Intercontinental Championship, Braun Breaker. I feel like WWE should have did a triple threat match. Just add Ilya to this. A triple threat for the IC title at SummerSlam would have went so much harder. Now we're just gonna see a repeat. We're just gonna see a repeat of what we saw at Money in the Bank. This was still a great match. Though. We got another one of those interesting Wyatt Six biographies about one of the superstars in the group backstage. This time it was about Nikki Cross. They didn't mention her name, Nikki Cross, at all. Uh, I guess she's taking on more of like a Sister Abigail role, but this was probably the creepiest video they've done so far. Just a lot of eerie screams and different looks from Nikki Cross. She looks like an absolute menace in this video. If you guys missed it, I recommend checking it out. It's kind of frightening. Uh, but yeah, they just keep hyping up the Wyatt Six, and what would happen later in the show, which I can't wait to talk about, was crazy. <laughs> Sonya Deville went one-on-one -on -one with Lyra Valkyria. This match was pretty decent. Lyra Valkyria would have had the victory if it wasn't for a bunch of outside interference, man. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark caused so much interference. Led to Sonya Deville hitting the Deville's advocate, and she freaking picked up the victory. Bro, this would have been all Lyra if it wasn't for outside interference. Freaking annoying. Sonya did not deserve this victory. Lyra had it all day. It was a six-man tag team match where Xavier Woods got some backup in the form of Otis and Akira Tozawa going up against the final. Final Testament, Karrion Cross, and AOP. Match was okay, nothing too crazy. In the end, we did see Karrion Cross pin Xavier Woods, just like I knew was going to happen because they want to keep their storyline going. How long are they going to continue this? Is Xavier Woods going to join the group or not? Like, give us an answer. Like, this has been going on for like a month and a half. Like, freaking tell us if Woods is going to split off from Kingston. Obviously, Kingston's injured, but we need an answer, all right? Anyways, after that six-man tag team match, Otis, Akira, and Maxine all got scolded by freaking Chad Gable. That darn Chad Gable. Gable coming out with the Creed brothers, just basically saying this is your last chance to join back with the Alpha Academy. And if you don't, remember, the Wyatt Six is coming after everybody. You guys will have no protection. And I was like, bro. So they just start beating them down. They're about to use some steel chairs on the outside. And then the lights go out. You had all the members of the Wyatt Six up by the entrance stage, distracting the Creeds and Chad Gable, but no Uncle Howdy. Uncle Howdy appeared behind Chad Gable. He would turn him around and hit one of the most wicked sister Abigails I have ever seen. Chad Gable sold it like a freaking G. It was dark when he hit the sister Abigail, but you could still see the whiplash that Chad Gable got from this freaking sister Abigail. It was wicked. And it was so cool to see Uncle Howdy in the freaking ring just wrestling, hitting a sister Abigail. He looked amazing. Looked so menacing, by the way. Obviously, I'm using a Bray Wyatt Fiend figure here because there's no Uncle Howdy figure. But what there is, you already know he's going to be popping in these action figure setups, but I love the way they did the Wyatt Six here. This was freaking awesome. We were supposed to have a one-on-one -on -one match between Pete Dunne and Bronson Reed, but before the 
match could even get started, before the bell could even ring, Sheamus jumps the ring, attacks Pete Dunne, attacks Bronson Reed, and freaking takes out everybody. He's tired of people getting in his business. Ten beats to the Bowron to Pete Dunne, bro kick to Bronson Reed, Sheamus is pissed off. I can see this being a triple threat match, because uh, somehow Bronson Reed's involved in this. But yeah, this is going to go for a great triple threat match, probably just a raw match, and I'm totally fine with that. This is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, we didn't get a match, Sheamus spoils it. This was so heartbreaking to watch. Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley needed to solve the Liv Morgan issue. Rhea wanted Dom to freaking grow a set and just tell her off, and Dom did just that. Liv Morgan wanted to hear three words from Dominic Mysterio, though her words that she wanted to hear were obviously, I love you, from Dominic Mysterio, but Dominic Mysterio was not having it. Instead of saying, I love you, he said, I hate you. You've made my life a living hell, and I hate you. It literally made Liv Morgan cry. I was like, dude, how are you gonna do Liv like that? It was actually heartbreaking to watch this segment. And then after Dom did that, Liv cries, she walks away, and she was like up in the stands. She wasn't on ringside. And then Rhea Ripley licks Dominic Mysterio's face, and then whispers something in his ear. So you would rather have a lick on the face and whispers in their ear than Liv Morgan? Dom, you're absolutely insane. But yeah, this was heartbreaking to watch, but I don't think it's over. I think Liv and Dom are planning something, and I see Dom helping Liv retain that World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam. Freaking watch it happen. Selena Vega finally got a victory, thank God. She went one-on-one -on -one with Zoe Stark, and she freaking won, dude. It felt great to see Selena Vega pick up the victory. Obviously, there was some outside interference with Caden Carter and Katana Chance and Lyra Valkyria taking out Sonya Deville and Shayna Bay they are allowed. That led to Selena Vega hitting the code red and picking up the victory. It felt so good seeing Selena Vega win a match with just, I don't know, it just felt good, man. I mean, was it just me or just, it felt good to see Selena Vega pick up the victory. Gunther got another hype video here on Raw talking about his career and talking about how he says he's going to get the world title at SummerSlam. I'll say it for the third week in a row. I feel like it would be a mistake if they put that world title on Gunther, but I feel like they're going to. Uh, they, they basically have to. They got to take that title off of Priest because Gunther can't lose, bro. CM Punk wanted to pick a fight with freaking Drew McIntyre because Drew McIntyre has been reinstated, which means he is no longer suspended and CM Punk announces he's medically freaking cleared, so he wants to kick some ass. So he calls out Drew McIntyre and then Pierce is like, ooh, my brand new Adam Pierce build a figure, by the way. Check that out. Pierce comes out. He's like, nope, this ain't happening. This ain't happening. We need somebody that's gonna enforce the rules in this match. Seth Rollins' music hits. Seth Rollins comes out, announces that he will be the special guest referee for CM CM Punk and Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. I called this and I'm freaking excited about it. I was curious to see how they were going to do it. I'm like, are they going to do a th triple threat? What are they going to do? And they announced that he's going to be the special guest referee. Who's he going to screw over though? Because Seth is going to screw somebody over in this match uh, and I don't know who it's going to be. I would assume Punk. I feel like Seth hates Punk more than Drew. But this was an amazing segment. Security held back everybody and there was really no brawl that went down, but man, this was heated. This was some good stuff. It was our main event of the show where Jey Uso and Sami Zayn teamed up once again to go up against the tag team champions Finn Balor and JD McDonough. The way that this match got uh, brought up was Rhea Ripley actually didn't want the Judgment Day going to look for Jey Uso to beat him up, but they did anyways. So Rhea was kind of pissed off. But then Sami Zayn saw him attacking Jey backstage. He's like, nah, this ain't happening. So he helped him out, turned into a tag team match, main event of the show. It was a great freaking tag team match. We saw a 1D from Sami and Jey. It just felt so good seeing them team back up, walking down the freaking uh, road ramp with the fans doing yeet backstage doing their classic handshake i think they could be planting a seed i feel like sammy's gonna rejoin back up with the bloodline during the bloodline civil war i think that would be awesome um but yeah this was a great tag team match we did see sammy and jay pick up the victory uh with a little frog splash off the top rope and you gotta remember sammy and jay just beat the tag team champions you gotta think they're gonna be getting a tag team title opportunity in the future like they have to they just beat the champs bro the judgment day on ringside tried to get involved in this match but it just wouldn't work out man jay and sammy were too much for him but immediately after the match Braun Breaker spears Sammy, and I'm like, bro, this is the same old, same old. Every week, every dang week, Braun Breaker spearing Sammy Zayn, bro. It's freaking old. I, I love Braun Breaker. I do. I love Sammy Zayn. But this is just, ah, oh, man, it's so repetitive. It is. I don't know. I just don't like this. But this was banging. Let me know what you thought about Raw down in the comment section down below. If I had to rank Raw this week, I would give it a solid 8 out of 10. I thought this was an absolutely jam packed episode of Raw. My favorite moment was when they announced Seth Rollins as the special guest referee. I think this was awesome. 
and I'm super happy that he's going to be getting involved between his two rivals at the current time, CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. Let's jump into SmackDown now. Into the blue brand, Friday Night SmackDown from Omaha, Nebraska. This episode of SmackDown was just okay, but we're going to run it up. We're going to talk about it regardless, so let's go. Opening up the show with a one-on-one -on -one match between LA Knight and Santos Escobar. Santos Escobar looking to possibly steal the spot that LA Knight has at SummerSlam if he picks up the victory here. You got to think that puts him in line against Logan Paul at SummerSlam, but it didn't happen. Speaking of Logan Paul, Logan Paul actually tried to get involved. He jumped on the apron when the ref wasn't looking, but LA Knight avoided the attack and was still able to pin Santos Escobar one two, three. Immediately after the match, Logan Paul attacks LA Knight and then teams up with Santos Escobar to do a little two-on-one beatdown in LA Knight. And LA Knight, he doesn't have too many friends backstage, so nobody comes out to help him out. So LA Knight gets beat down and then Logan Paul delivers his signature frog splash to LA Knight, taking him out and sending a message before SummerSlam. Later backstage, Logan Paul would announce that he has something very big planned for SummerSlam. A big surprise is planned for him at SummerSlam. I don't know what that surprise is going to be, but... All I gotta say is LA Knight better win that freaking United States Championship. And if he doesn't, man, they're making a big mistake. He needs that title belt. Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair are sick of being ignored. They called out Elba Fire and Isla Dawn because they want their tag team championship match. They called them out, their music hits, but they don't come out from the entrance stage. They attack them from behind. Typical coward champions. So they attack them from behind, but Bianca Belair and Jade Car Cargill are still able to take them out even though they got the upper hand on them. They, they they still weren't able to touch my girls Jade and Bianca, bro. So this earned them a WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match next week on SmackDown. Hopefully they pick up the titles again, or we could also possibly see a heel turn from Jade Cargill, which I'd also be down for. I think that would be really cool. Setting up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, rivalry between Bianca and Jade. I'd be totally down for that. We had a massive six-team tag team gauntlet match here. Winner is the number one contender for DIY's Tag Team Championships. This was a great great match consisting of a bunch of different tag team on SmackDown. We opened up the tag team match, or the gauntlet match I should say with Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews up against Legato de Fantasma, Angel, and Birdo. Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews were actually able to pick up the victory and man, they got some good chemistry together. I like watching Apollo and Corbin. I think they're really good. I like Corbin more than Apollo. I've mentioned that before. Corbin is so freaking... I love this new version of Corbin. But they didn't get so lucky when they had to go up against the Street Profits. The Street Profits came out. They picked off Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews and then they beat pretty deadly and then they also beat the OC Luke Gals and Carl Anderson so they literally picked off everybody and Montez Ford was going crazy Dawkins was going crazy I'm like man they deserve this freaking win here dude they are kicking so much butt but who was the final tag team they had to face the bloodline Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga it was supposed to be Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga but Tonga Loa is not medically clear due to his eye injury that he sustained from Kevin Owens last week so Jacob Fatu stepped in his place and the bloodline was able to take the W over the Street Profits. You already know Solo had to get involved multiple times on ringside making this a three on two situation. Uh, the bloodline does pick up the victory. They are the number one contenders for the tag team championships and I see them being the next champs, bro. They're, they're going to beat DIY. Unless somebody gets involved, they will beat DIY. They will be the next tag team champions. I guarantee it. Do you guys like the new bloodline? Let me know down in the comment section down below. There's always mixed opinions on if the new bloodline's good or not. I'm curious. What do you guys think? Terrence Crawford made another appearance in WWE. Last week, he helped out Cody Rhodes with a steel chair. And this week, he sucker punched freaking Austin Theory. But this sucker punch wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Grayson Waller basically shoving him in the way again saying, yeah, you think you're so tough, Terrence Crossword, and then he pushes Austin Theory in front of him, basically saying, yeah, Austin Theory is going to take care of you. Grayson Waller is such a coward. He is using Austin Theory, and Austin Theory needs to freaking recognize this and just finally not turn on Waller, but just leave Grayson Waller, become a face, do your own thing. Theory would be great as a face. Trust me, he would be great as a face. But seeing Terrence Crawford on uh, WWE again, he's pretty cool. I enjoyed him. It was our main event of the show where Tiffany Stratton and Nia Jax teamed up to go up against Bailey and me. Meechin, Mia Yim. Before the match could even get started during Meechin's entrance, Meechin gets attacked by both Naya and Tiffany Stratton. For the entire match, Meechin was already beat to a pulp. Bailey tried coming out with a kendo stick to even up the odds. Went to commercial. The match starts up, and the match was just one-sided basically the entire time, because once again, Meechin could just not get in the zone, bro. She was already beat down. She couldn't compete, basically. She was freaking torn up. In the end, Tiffany Stratton had to cheat with her broken-down, taped-up briefcase that was destroyed last week. She hit Bailey over the head with it, while the 
the referee was not looking. Nia Jax was able to hit her annihilator in the corner to pick up the victory and pin the WWE Women's Champion Bailey. That's huge going into her match at SummerSlam. That's literally massive. She literally just pinned the champ, bro. Also, Nia Jax promised Tiffany Stratton a new briefcase. You gotta think that's gonna be a pink one. Come on, babe. It's gotta be a pink one. To top off the show, the Bloodline cut a promo backstage. Solo Sokoa basically warning Cody Rhodes and... Roman Reigns, that if they have a problem with Solo Sokoa becoming the new world champion, you know where to freaking find him. He was even calling out Roman Reigns in this segment. Bro's got some guts to be saying that. I'm so curious to see what they're going to do at SummerSlam. I think Roman Reigns could possibly return. The prediction video will be coming this week, so stay tuned for it. It's going to be bold, it's going to be big, and I'm excited to do it. Still going to rank this show out of 10 if I had to rank it out of 10. I'd give it a solid 5 out of 10. Once again, I thought it was a pretty mid show. And my favorite moment had to have been the Bloodline probably becoming number one contender. That's huge for that team, and they're most most likely guaranteed going to become the next tag team champions on SmackDown. That was the week in review. Let me know once again your thoughts on both shows down in the comment section down below. For this week, Raw was definitely better than SmackDown this week. There's no doubt about that. Stay tuned for next week where we run it back again. We talk about Raw and SmackDown and SummerSlam, and I'll see you guys next time. Brett Alive is out. <laughs>